Hi, this is Kirsten from JK Fiber Arts. Today I thought we'd do some art bats. Uh, the first one I'm doing with merino tensile, some uh, Peruvian wool with viscose bits to give you a tweed effect, and some fire star. Uh, this is all, uh, yeah, this is all uh, fiber that I got from Camage uh, Fibers. I have this lovely one pound bag of fire star, uh, and what I did was I just pulled out uh, the uh, yellow orangey with a touch of green. I didn't want the blue and the red in here, it wouldn't go. Um, I uh, also busted out my color wheel. So uh, just, uh, you should always have a color wheel um, and this will help a lot. Uh, so I basically did um, a variation of a progressive colorway here, but these are all varying shades and or tints. So a shade is a primary color with either um, black or a complementary color to darken it. And a tint is a uh, primary color that's lightened with white. So if you, if you kind of slide this wheel along here, so this is a, uh, a tint of orange. Uh, we've got uh, obviously green and then here's a green tint. And you can see that that's kind of like a yellow green there. And that is uh, more of the basic green. And then uh, over here at the end, this is a tint of that red. And this is also, uh, although it's hard to believe, but it is a tint of orange here. I think that's the closest one. Although there's probably a little bit of uh, pinkish red in there too, because you can see a little bit there. Uh, and then um, we're moving on here and this is the orange. So this is actually a shade of orange. So that's adding some black to it and this is darker. And then we are back to, that's probably a, a yellow green. Yeah, that's, that's kind of more in this neighborhood, probably right about in here. So I have all of these uh, complementary, they are complementary colors with shades and tints. So we're gonna work our way through that and see how it goes. Uh, and then I'm gonna add in these uh, little color pops. This is this Peruvian, uh, wool with viscose bits. The viscose bits tend to spin up nicer than like the wool nefs. Um, they don't fall out as much uh, when you're spinning. So I really do like the viscose nefs uh, and we'll see how that goes. And then obviously a little bit of shininess and uh, some tensile here too, which will add some strength to the final yarn if you want to make something uh, that uh, wears a little bit better. Um, although this should wear great because this is all merino. Uh, and then uh, just some little bright white in there and we'll see how it looks we're just gonna throw it on the wheel here or i'm sorry on the carter and uh let's see what we get uh this is uh how i imagine line them up they are in fairly random order uh these really look like beautiful fall colors uh so my plan is to do one color layer at a time the whole way across the base of the drum carter and at the end diz it off the drum carter into a roving. That way I can spin it from the fold. All right, so now uh, I am going to continue to just add layers on here. Um, I, I did the first base layer, I burnished it, realizing that it was off frame for that. Um, now I am uh, up to this gold layer, which I'm adding on right now. And uh, you missed the painting onto the uh, drum carter because I don't think it was on frame, but that's right, I'm gonna do another layer of it. I'm just gonna put this on here. And because this is top, you gotta open it up a little bit to be able to pull it. this lighter green and I think what I'm gonna do is in between these two add some of this blue wool with the um, the, the nets uh, there's a couple ways to put this on um, one is just run it right through the drum carter 
Now, if you're using the wool naps uh, and it's mixed in with some wool, uh, sometimes when you put this through the liquor in, the naps are gonna get stuck all over your liquor in. Uh, so uh, the other way to do it would be to paint it on. And I will show you that too. So just gonna wind that on. And if you watch on the drum card, you see all of that beautiful tweedy goodness in there and none of it stuck to my liquor in because that is the beauty of the viscose nep. Another way that you could do that would be to paint directly onto the drum. And that is a good way when you have the uh, loose neps or when you have wool neps that tend to not stick into the fiber as well. Um, I actually really like the way this looks when I put it through the liquor in with this particular blend. Uh, this is all from Camage Fibers, and she has a beautiful product called ColourPop, and it uh, gives you this incredible tweed effect. I have become quite addicted to the tweed. And then we're gonna keep going, but you can see now I have all these beautiful little speckles in here. Just gonna pack that in, everything's going down. To continue on with this lighter green, kind of a yellowy green. that yellow green with that blue looks really cool and put that on like that I like it and so I'm gonna put some green there and this edge over here also is a little thin so I'm just gonna add some more fiber there and I'll burnish that down Great. Now I'm going to paint this Firestar onto the drum carter. You just paint right onto the drum carter. And when you do that, um, you want to make sure, uh, because my plan is to diz this off at the end, that you stay in line with the fibers. If you go across like this, which is a technique and it looks really cool, uh, not for dizzing though. That would be fine for taking uh, for making bats that you're going to just take off in one sheet. Um, but for doing uh, a uh, roving, you would want to stay in line or else it'll be really hard to have it come through the hole in the diz. All right, that looks pretty good. And now we're gonna keep going here. I have this light peach and then I'm just gonna keep doing this. I'm gonna paint the uh, Firestar on and I'm gonna use the green and the blue uh, called color pop with the uh, viscose neps and I'm just gonna keep on working through and then we'll dizz it off at the end and we'll see what it looks like I'm going to paint a little tinsel on top now and again you just want to keep it in line with the fiber that's already on there and uh, this is uh, just gonna give me a little bit of shine to it here All right. And then I'm just gonna continue on. Let's see, I haven't done sparkle in a little bit. Let's do a little bit of sparkle in with that tinsel too. This is gonna look great. I keep it so that it's, uh, let's try a smaller piece. There we go. That way the backside doesn't come down and tangle. Right on, staying in line with the fibers. Burnish the end there. We're almost at the end of this. I'm just gonna do these uh, last two colors and I'm gonna do some of this uh, uh, viscous uh, through here and uh, a little tinsel, tinsel, which I think will show up nice and then uh, we'll take this off. So I'm gonna carry through. So now I'm just gonna put some of this white on the top here. Just give it a little bit of shine. And I'm staying in line with the fibers. Good. And, yeah, might as well just go all in, put a little sparkle on this top layer too. Now we have sparkle and shine. 
So this is gonna give us a really nice sparkly, shiny, tweedy art bat. All right, uh, next step is we're gonna just loosen up this packer brush. Get the extra stuff off here. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through this part. Uh, the previous video I uh, did this in detail uh, and I'll just put this through on uh, time-lapse. If you wanna watch it in real time and uh, get all the details, uh, I do have that video posted separately previously. I'm going to uh, hand uh, crochet chain this into a uh, braid for roving. Uh, I like this way. The braiding obviously looks really pretty and, and I like it, but it's a pain in the butt to undo. This way you just uh, pull the end and then it just un, uh, it comes apart really easy. Come up to the end here. Okay. And there you have it. Hand chain roving. Ta-da! This is the final roving that I dizzed off of the drum carter. I went ahead and uh, made two bats, a total of about seven ounces. I spun from the fold three separate singles and uh, went ahead and did a standard three-ply. Here it is on the bobbin prior to setting this twist. I really did love the way this turned out. Uh, this is the uh, final set yarn, and it has this beautiful golden sheen from the Firestar. It has tweedy. It has shiny from the tensil. It has silky bits. Oh, I just, I love it. It has such a beautiful fall harvest feel to it. Um, I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, likely knit a scarf. Uh, this ended up being an Aran weight yarn. I hope that you guys uh, found some uh, tips you can use when you're making your own custom bats. And until next time, spin happy.